So this is going to be our first lesson on solving radical equations. Now a radical equation is just an equation that has a radical or a square root inside of it. Okay, now we're going to follow the same basic process for all of these. The first step is always going to be isolate the radical. Okay, now whatever's inside the radical, you can't change that, but we will get that radical all by itself, meaning that nothing else will be on the same side of the equation. Everything else is going to get moved to the other side. Number two, we're going to square the function. Okay, So that means that we're going to square both sides of the equation. And then number three, we will solve for x. Now in some cases that'll be solving a linear equation, in other cases it'll be solving a quadratic equation by factoring or using quadratic formula. But this is the same three steps that we will follow for every single one of these. Okay, So let's start with this first example. It's a pretty simple one. Our first step is to isolate the radical. And so just as if this were a normal x, I'm going to start by adding the 8 to both sides. So I have 2 root of x is equal to 8. Now I don't have the radical by itself yet, and so I need to do the inverse of multiplying, which is divide. Okay, so we divide both sides by 2, and I get that the square root of x is equal to 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Okay, now from this point, all I have to do is get rid of the radical. I've got the, I've got the radical isolated. It's the only thing on this side and so I'm going to square it. Now the reason I square it is because square is the inverse of or the opposite of the the square root. And so when I do that, the square and the square root cancel each other out and I'm left with x equals 4 squared or 16. And so that's the answer to my first problem there. Okay, let's go on and let's look at another example, another similar one. But again, I'm going to use the same process. First, I'm going to isolate the radical. So I've got to add this 7 to both sides to get that radical all by itself. So I've got the square root of x equals 7. Okay, now this time, uh, again, I'm going to do step 2, which is to square the function. So I'm going to square both sides. When I square this side, the square root cancels out because those are inverses, so I'm left with x equals 7 squared, or 49. Okay, so pretty easy, the first, the easier ones here. All right, so we're going to scroll down, and we're going to try one that's a little bit harder, but it's, it's going to be following the same exact steps. Step one, isolate the radical. Now you'll notice this time that the radical has something else in it. It's an x minus 7. And so when I do this, I'll go ahead and subtract the 12. So I'll have 4 root x minus 7 is equal to 16. And then I'll divide both sides by the 4, because that's 4 times the root. So I'll divide both sides by 4, and I've got the root of x minus 7 is equal to 16 divided by 4, which is 4. And now, since the radical is all by itself, that means I'm going to do step number 2. I'm going to square the function, so I'm going to square both sides. Okay, so again, the square root and the squared term will cancel each other out because they're inverses. So I'll be left with x minus 7 equals 4 squared, which is 16. And then I'm going to finish up by solving for x. In this case, that means add 7 to both sides. And so x is equal to 23. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so these are pretty easy. We're going to go ahead and look at a couple more examples in the next video.